Yeah, g'day everyone, it's Borny from PDI. We're just gonna do a quick overview video of the Featherweight stock. Um, we've just recently installed the Athlon BTR first focal plane scope to our 260 REM, which has probably been featured in some of the videos you follow us on Facebook or YouTube. Speaking of which, if you don't already, follow us on Facebook, hit like, and hit like in this video too. We really appreciate it, and I'll encourage us to do more videos. But anyway, back to the rifle. Yeah, it started life as a super light. We stripped off the factory stock and the aluminium recoil lug and got rid of that. Um, and yeah, this is what you're left with basically. We've got the original factory OTM, um, DBM, which is the original manufacturer's plastic DBM. They're nice and light, so a lot of guys keep running them and you still get more than acceptable performance. If, if you want to milk the last bit of accuracy out of your ticker, we generally recommend to sacrifice a bit of weight and get the Atlas Works sort of aluminium replacement, but look, that's up to you and depends on what your end result's gonna be. I mean, if you're chasing long range performance, then yeah, you're gonna to have to sacrifice a bit of weight, but then again, you're gonna lose a bit of weight by going into the um, featherweight stock and also you're gonna to have to accept a bit of a weight gain if you're going for long range because you have to put a heavier optic on top. Um, not saying that a three to nine can't shoot long range, but it definitely makes it a lot easier if you're running a 6 to 24 or something like that, and you're know, shooting smaller targets. Um, what else to talk about? Yeah, look, we're just running a Harris on this one. This is the standard featherweight stock. It's not one of the, sort of the feature builds, like I think we're doing a mountain set build and also a stalker set build. Um, they come with flush carps and a javelin bipod attachment or a PSR Atlas bipod attachment. Um, we strongly recommend the upgraded versions. They're a much nicer sort of usable item but at the same time you know if you're just trying to keep the weight down keep it simple as possible and and not spend more money than you need to then this is probably what you're going to end up with and they're fantastic um they are carbon fiber they are super light this is the rough tough finish that people ask about um it's pretty durable uh, <laughs> Maybe not drill enough to bang around on the back of the ute repetitively as we just found out from one of our recent customers He reckons he's worn it through at the grip there where it's rubbed on um, top of his ute But look that as far as uh, Bouncing around in mud dirt and rocks they they seem to be holding up. Maybe just not constant abrasion on steel or aluminium um, This is the machined action material uh, if guys have seen us at shot or one of the other events or seen a f-class rifle It's a very similar compound. It's um, a composite base, um, you can, yeah, I don't know what to say about it. It's machinable, so we can put different inlets into the stocks. We know we're only offering tickers at the moment, but there'll be more information on that coming pretty soon. Um, what else to talk about? I think that's it. Oh, oversized recoil lug. So we do oversize recoil lug because there is a lot of variation. If guys want to use larger ones, and they can. It's a 6 mil slot, but it's slightly wider than standard. So the Lumley... Um, titanium ones fit in nicely, um, but they will move from side to side. But once that's torqued down and bites onto that, it will not move. So you don't have to stress about that. The, the pillars are already in, um, but they aren't glued in. They just push fit. So it's a nice tight fit. And it means that if you want to then bed it out, or bed it in, I should say, you can just by drilling that out, putting it in loosely, roughing out the outside and, and going from there. We also well, they also come, the Lumley Arms kits come with two replacement action screws, so you can actually get nice and even torque. Um, it makes a big difference. Uh, it really, really does. And I think I've mentioned this before, and if not, I'll do it again. We do recommend um, the Atlas Works replacement aluminium versions of the factory DBM, just because it evens out the torque on the action. Uh, but look, if you're chasing weight saving, this setup, we've taken this to 700 metres and, you know, hit three quarter minute of gong regularly. So, sorry, no, it was a one minute of angle gong, I'm pretty sure. I'll have to double check. But anyway, it's, you know, it's hitting nice, nice tight groups out to seven, 800 meters, and the whole rifle might weigh three and a half kilos. So, we really recommend going the extra step, but if you're chasing weight, you're not gonna lose anything. Um, all right, well, let's, let's just put it together. We generally suggest putting the recoil lug in your action first. Now, this one's already been chewed up a little bit. And by chewed up, I, I mean gripped with vice grips to pull it out of a previous stock. This used to, rifle used to be in a touch. Line it up, 
And oh, that's always a challenge, getting you to stay in. Another reason to get it bedded, because then once it's in, you don't have to worry about that recoil lug sliding out. There we go. Push it down. That should be nice and tight. And Um, when they're new, this might be a little bit tight in this area. Just nice even pressure, both thumbs, push it down, should go into place. Ah, also, the Lumley Arms action screws are slightly shorter than factory. So if you're having trouble getting these to bite, maybe just quickly grab your factory ones, do it up a little bit, that'll actually pull it past the carbon which it sometimes bites onto, and then you can toss those original action screws and, and grab the Lumley ones. Um, yes. T25 or X heads work. I've only got a T25 on hand, which is a Torx bit, it works pretty well. Um, they're finger tight. And I'll just set the wheeler to 35 inch pounds. Gradually pulling it in. Keeping the pressure nice and even, the action stays nice and straight. You feel it, and then it should go. And there you have it. That's how long it takes to install a featherweight stock onto a Ticket T3. Um, just check everything goes together nicely, the safeties and things work. If you have any issues, let us know, we'll fix them pretty quickly. Um, yep, that's. Feeding nicely, um, that is clear. We'll just close that, pull the safety on, and she's locked down tight. Pull the safety on, lift that up, trigger works again, everything works again. Check the bolt release, has enough clearance. Yep. Yep, she's all functioning. And there we have it. That's how to save a lot of weight and dramatically improve the stiffness of your stock. Look, get on it. If you're thinking about a featherweight, um, we make them, so of course we're gonna say they're amazing, but they really are, they're, they're fantastic. Um, and look, they had nothing wrong with the Harris. I, I rubbish it a little bit, but I mean, really, you should upgrade if you're serious about your hunting. <laughs> um, especially because this is so fiddly. We recently introduced the Stalker kit, which includes a Javelin bipod mount and all do a demo of that when it arrives, but they have them by for hunters. Um, it's pretty great. I strongly recommend it. And there we have it. There is a 700 meter gun all put back together. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you want to see anything else like this or want more information about a particular thing, very new to doing these sorts of videos. So as they say, let me have it, have the criticism, get it in there and we'll try and do it better. Cheers for watching. Oh, just quickly, uh, back where it was. Completely forgot to do this. Uh, somebody asked if they're pre-floated. The answer is yes. All right, cheers, guys.